Hey, I'm wishing you all a relaxed and hopefully fine day. This is Murdoch's Music Minute, the channel reviewing albums in an often clumsy and lengthy style. Today's album review contains L.A. Melancholia, the who is who of 1970s soft rock and introspective lyricism. But to get us in the right mood, let's first start with some very quick information about the artist in question. Already as a teenager, Jackson Brown wrote songs later recorded by other artists. Most famously, his song These Days, recorded by Nico as early as 1967, a time when Brown briefly lived in New York City in a relationship with Nico, and the first mentionable hit for the Eagles, Take It Easy, a collaboration with Glenn Frey that was released in 1972. Brown was born in Heidelberg, Germany, where his father was stationed for a while with the Stars and Stripes newspaper. When Jackson was three, the family moved back to the USA, where he grew up in a house built by his grandfather, the so-called Abbey San Encino, in Los Angeles. After being noted by other musicians and songwriters in the LA area and frequent live gigs in local venues, Brown's self-titled debut album, Don't Call It Saturate Before Using, was released in 1972. It featured two top 40 US hits, the up-tempo Dr. My Eyes and the early track Rock Me on the Water. Brown plays piano and acoustic guitar, but his albums weren't sparse singer-songwriter affairs. Using his connections in the LA songwriter scene, he was backed up by members of the so-called Section, studio musicians who played a lot on the West Coast rock and songwriter albums of the early 70s. The follow-up to this promising start as a solo artist came out the next year and had the title For Every Man, but initially did not meet with the same success among the public. And that, although we are invited to this place, on the record cover. It is the house where Jackson Brown grew up as a kid in California and which apparently is still owned by the family. This picture shows a dreamy, a little bit fairy tale like place, but also a lonely, somewhat forgotten place, which reflects the mood of a lot of the songs on For Every Man. Yet as the first track, we get Jackson Brown's own version of Take It Easy, arguably the catchiest song of the whole album. The recording by the Eagles obviously is the better known one and uh, steps on the gas a bit more, but uh, Jackson's own take is wonderfully melodic, a bit more laid back and has a country rock approach, including a very nice pedal steel solo. It's one of those songs that perfectly captures the feeling of driving down the highways on a sunny day at the west coast, at least for me who hasn't been to the US west coast yet. I guess um, most people will prefer the version by the Eagles, but it's worth checking out uh, Brown's recording. After all, he wrote most of the song. Well, I'm running down the road trying to loosen my load I got seven women on my mind Four that wanna own me, two that wanna stone me One said she's a friend of mine Take it easy, take it easy Take it easy seamlessly blends into Our Lady of the Well by means of a simple but effective groove on the hi-hat, which just keeps playing while the rest of Take It Easy fades out. Our Lady of the Well is another country-tinged, very relaxed song with piano and a vaguely Mexican-sounding acoustic guitar. It's um, also a very melancholic uh, song due to Jackson Brown's lyrics. Colors of the Sun continues in uh, that vein, 
There is a great acoustic guitar solo on that one, as well as some brooding piano playing. The lyrics of the song are not easy to decipher. As far as I get it, um, this is about finding one's own way and truth in life in a spiritual way. There's also some criticism of religion involved or turning away from Christian dogmatism. Um, this is a more earnest and a bit mysterious track. Colors of the sun Flashing on the water top Echo on the land Then we get to track four, I Thought I Was a Child. Like the two songs before it, it's a more subdued and introspective song. Uh, it's very piano-centered and um, it deals with the subject of being insecure about love and about oneself. Like often in Brown's songwriting, I'd say this is a very solid but not necessarily very memorable tune. The A-side ends with a Jackson Brown standard, actually one of his very early songs. For, for every man, uh, Brown took a look back at uh, some of his really early tunes and um, rearranged them or, or polished them up a bit. Um, these days, um, as mentioned, this song had been recorded before Brown's own version by Nico and Dwayne Allman and a few others, I think. In his own version, we get more of that laid-back, very calm, um, country-tinged um, singer-songwriter West Coast rock that is also a bit laconic. And I'd say that's the sound that defines the For Every Man album. These Days is about loss, failure and regrets which is remarkable given that the lyrics came from a shockingly world-weary 16-year-old Jackson Brown. These Days has become one of Jackson Brown's most popular songs, although it is neither very energetic or inventively arranged nor particularly catchy, in my opinion. This is one of those singer-songwriter tracks that is more about the quality of the lyrics than anything else. Even though we get a great guitar solo by Brown's congenial musical partner, David Lindley. If I had to choose, I'd take Nico's version over this one with its delicate finger picking on the electric guitar and the strings. It has a more Baroque pop feeling, uh, which is no surprise. After all, that one came out in 1967. But uh, it also is a bit more poetic, in my opinion, than Jackson Brown's dustier, more straightforward Americana rock take on For Every Man. Well, at the end of the day, it's all a question of personal taste. If you flip the record over, side two hits you over the head without warning with Rat Neck Friend. Oh, you maybe go now. Finally, we get to the Jackson Brown material that is filled with social and political commentary. No. No. Jackson Brown albums most of the time are mid-tempo to slow-tempo dominated, except for one or two unexpected rockers. And Redneck Friend is 
the one on for every man but even here we get a clear country rock vibe redneck friend as the most up-tempo and rock and roll number of the album lent itself to be released as a single and uh, reached number 85 in the usa david lindley plays a rousing slide guitar solo glenn frey from the eagles is on backing vocals and a certain Rocket Day Johnny is credited as the honky tonk piano player. You all know him better as Elton John. That is quite a guest list for a song that is basically about a particular part of Brown's body, literally cock rock made by a singer songwriter. If you can live with the juvenile innuendo, I think this shot in the arm does the pace of the album quite good. The following The Times You've Come is not really a sequel to the content of Redneck Friend, although there is also clearly um, a sexual meaning involved. Other than that, we are back at what people usually associate with Jackson Brown's music. A laid-back tempo, gentle acoustic guitars and poetic lyrics with a preference for introspection and a certain sadness. It's a peaceful yet also weary track looking back at a love relationship. Beautiful acoustic guitars on this track and harmony vocals by Bonnie Raitt. Next we get to the very autobiographical Ready or Not about a young rock and roll couple that needs to settle down when she realizes she's pregnant. It starts with a bar fight and ends with buying a washing machine. There are a lot of ironic descriptions and humorous lines in this one, although this song too is slightly permeated by that sense of melancholia that is almost everywhere on For Every Man. Punched an unemployed actor Defending her dignity Well, he stood up and knocked me through that barroom door And that girl came home with me The track's star for me is David Lindley's electric fiddle and the catchy melody all wrapped up in a country rock dress. Sadly, not long afterwards, Jackson Brown's wife committed suicide, a very traumatic event, naturally, that Brown digested on some of his following albums. Maybe Brown also had his tongue in his cheek a bit when he named the next song Sing My Songs to Me, um, with all the artists he had written songs for in the late 60s and early 70s. But no, um, that's of course just my strange fancy, because this song in a raw form dates back as far as 1966. This track comes across as more positive and hopeful, and I really like its relaxed groove and piano playing. Because it seems to me that there might never be another chance. Bring my dreams to me. It's a shorter track and for some listeners maybe just a prelude or a build-up to the final track, which is also the title track, but Sing My Songs To Me is one of my faves from this album. Almost hidden in the mix, Joni Mitchell gets to caress the e-piano a bit and then there's the steady, not too complicated, but really cool groovy drumming of Gary Malibur who um, apparently also played with the Steve Miller band. Come timelessly dancing to my dreams
The concluding For Every Man not only is the longest track of the album, but it's also the one that reaches out most. It was famously inspired as a response to uh, the more exclusive, egoistic fantasy of sailing away and escaping from an apocalyptic society in the Crosby, Stills and Nash classic Wooden Ships. Maybe check out my review of their debut album and um, see me wear the same jacket. Um, David Crosby uh, sings backing vocals on f the track for Everyman and Jackson Brown also had spent some time with David Crosby. Uh, Brown put his own more optimistic vision in a chilled out West Coast soft rock song. Uh, very laid back, very tuneful. It's a yearning, tentatively optimistic song criticizing the lack of a mutual vision for deliverance. Everybody I talk to is ready to leave with the light of the morning. Standing alone, each has his own ticket in his hands. And as the evening descends, I sit thinking about every man. This is a truly fine piece of singer-songwriter craft. The song ends with an unexpected drum roll on a single tom, rising in volume and intensity to provide a little musical climax before the song then gently fades out into the Californian sunset. All my fine dreams, well thought out schemes to gain the motherland. When it came out, For Every Man did not appeal to everyone. Sales-wise, it did not perform as well as Jackson Brown's debut album, despite a guest musician's list reading like basically the who is who of early 70s folk and soft rock. The album barely missed the US Top 40 back in 1973, but has gone on to become one of Brown's critically most acclaimed releases. Um, as of the time of recording this uh, review video, For Every Man celebrates its 50th anniversary. So happy birthday, For Every Man. Another rock and roll anniversary, although one that will be talked about less than, say, Pink Floyd's Dark Side of the Moon or David Bowie's Aladdin Sane, I guess. Nowadays, Jackson Brown's For Every Man is generally considered a fascinating singer-songwriter album with great poetic qualities, showing a young artist who invites his listeners on the journey through the process of finding his own style and voice. I find For Every Man to be a bit of an overlooked classic of singer-songwriter or soft rock scene of the West Coast. It tends to dabble along a bit at times with not too many memorable moments in the music, something that is the case with most Jackson Brown albums, to be honest. And then there's also um, something strange going on with um, the sound of the album. On the one hand, it is very warm and organic and on the other hand I've always found it to sound a little bit dry and strangely muffled so there there must have been something odd happening during the engineering or the mixing of this album. I'm sure there are clearer remasters around or maybe it's just my ears. Let me know uh, if you if you know the old uh, vinyl version of the album. That notwithstanding, this is a beautifully uh, homogenic album, sometimes dreamy, 
Sometimes humor is very often contemplative in a post-hippie spirit. The highlights on this album are what takes this collection of songs easily at least one step above the ordinary 70s singer-songwriter fair. Jackson Brown songs usually are slow burners and not, with a few exceptions, instantly grabbing rock and roll. So give this album a bit of time, maybe on a balmy summer evening with a glass of Californian wine or a light Mexican beer. Jackson Brown fans usually love this album. If you have an interest in the whole American um, post-Woodstock folk rock singer-songwriter genre, For Every Man might be a nice discovery. Jackson Brown went on to record better known, maybe more essential albums, but uh, For Every Man could be a nice starting point into his discography. For Every Man by Jackson Brown, 50 years old this year in 2023. Incredible. Thanks for watching. If you've enjoyed this video, consider supporting my little channel with a like or a subscription. But uh, for now, thanks again and see you in another video. Bye-bye.